Their marriage now at 43 years in, they'll be the first people to tell you, we're having the best connection of our lives in every pillar at 43 yes. years married. Hey, 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 plumbing pros, welcome to the 390th episode of Potty Talk. And we got a very <laughs> powerful episode of Potty Talk for you here. We have well, gone off the rails. We have gone off the bit. rails. Well, <laughs> let me tell you what, our, our episode title is like the, the firm foundation mm -hmm. for plumbing business success. Mm -hmm. This is the firm foundation. It really is. For plumbing success. Mm -hmm. That being said. It has nothing to do with business plumbing. Uh, plumbing, one. right. So <laughs> maybe a little a warning here. Yeah, we Why, do um, want to say that this, this we go into, we talk about relationships and marriage, and we do go into sensitive topics um, that might not be suitable for young ears. So if you've got this plan and you've got little kids around, um, really suggest to, to put some headphones in or something. Not that we get graphic or anything, but um, we are we are talking about intimacy and marriage and and all that um, that entails. So just be on just slight slight warning. Yes. Okay, all that to say, but great guests here. We do. We we are bringing on um, Tony and Elisa Di Lorenzo. They are. And I'm going to read their their bio here if you don't mind. Um, they are the co host of the Top Marriage Podcast. Um, called One Extraordinary Marriage Show. Tony and Elisa speak to worldwide audiences about sex, love, and commitment hmm? and challenge every listener to make their relationship a priority. Gosh, I just, I love that so much, yes. right? Um, their best-selling book, The Six Pillars of Intimacy, has transformed countless marriages around the world. This is the frame. This framework is simple, practical, and powerful. You'll be inspired to look at your marriage through a new lens and be encouraged by its common sense approach. Tony and Lisa are authors, podcasters, and couples, and um, they coach couples around the world. They've been married since 1996, love that, and have two children, a son and a daughter, and live in um, San Diego, California. Yes. Well, we have fallen in love with Tony and Lisa. We absolutely have. And, and we believe heart. you will be, you will too. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So without further ado, <laughs> let us introduce you to Tony and Elisa. All right, as promised, we have Tony and Elisa. So... Di Lorenzo. Di Lorenzo. What's that right? Fun name. It's great to have you guys here. Yeah, welcome, guys. It's great to be here. So yeah. fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, you two. Well, well, we're super excited. We're super excited you're here. I've been super excited to introduce uh, you guys to our audience. All mm -hmm. right. And, and what you what you talk on. Um, you're, you're one of our favorite uh, podcasters. And uh, we, we love the idea of speaking on relationships and, and sexual intimacy and we just love how you guys bring it. So, so excited to have you here to share, you know, with our uh, potty talkers. Absolutely. Okay. And and as we mentioned in, in um, you know, the intro, um, this is a unique topic for potty yes. talk. So we're going a little bit off script, but um, as you guys know, we always talk about plumbing power couples and husbands and wives that, works to, that work together. Um, and we talk freedom, lifestyle, and all those things. Well, one of the biggest parts of it is not only learning to work together, but it's your relationship. And we thought we'd bring on the experts when it comes to um, relationships um, from an intimacy standpoint. And intimacy doesn't just mean sex, correct? That is Lisa. right. Yeah, Tony, right. let's hear it. Absolutely. You know, I love that you brought up the fact that intimacy doesn't just mean sex because so often those two words are actually used interchangeably. But as we discovered in our own marriage, and as I've told coaching clients for the last 10 years, you can't be having sex 24 hours a day, no matter how much that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> So it's, it's imperative that a couple figures out, especially your, your pulling power couples that they figure out how else can we be intimate? What are the other ways to make up all of the other time during the day or during the week to really have a strong marriage? Cause absolutely. When you have a strong marriage, your business skyrockets. Absolutely. Right on. You're absolutely yes. right. Yes. And that's, that's what I love. That's and and gang. This is why I'm so glad that Tony and Lisa are here because maybe this is a little, little off talk topic and what we normally talk about, but we know and I think as we were talking in the green room before we started here, that we've, we've seen it now hundreds of times, you know, the, the couples and we, you know, the PPCs that have a good relationship do extremely well. And even if it's not a PPC, being a plumbing power couple, I mean, the, the, maybe just the husband owns the business and, and the, the wife has, you know, is a professional somewhere else or, or, you know, works with, the kids. Home, works with the home, right. Whatever that is, when we see that the, that relationship is strong, then, you know, business winds up thriving. Exactly. Right. Yep. So this is extremely important. Absolutely. Have, having this emotional intimacy. Absolutely. So uh, guys, if you're watching this and, and your wife isn't with you, hit pause, 
Uh, Go grab your wife and listen to this episode. I want to listen up to these guys. Really beneficial. Um, So, and you guys do have some books out and we've got one here. So I want to talk about um, the main one, which is the six pillars of intimacy, right? Um, So if you want to maybe um, list out what those six pillars are, and then let's dive into one that you think is really one of the most, or if not the most important one. Absolutely. Well, let's first give, like you said, that overview of the six pillars. And and I just want to remind everyone, you know, this is a way to think of your marriage holistically. This is more than just saying, oh, we need to go out on more dates, you know, because that'll change our marriage or we need to have good conversations. So the first intimacy is emotional intimacy. And this is your closeness and connection that is, is happens through your communication, through the exchange of your thoughts, your feelings, your desires. It's that verbal and nonverbal communication. Yeah. Our next one is our physical intimacy. And this is your non-sexual touch. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about sexual intimacy, but this is actually getting close and connected just through holding hands, kissing, hugging, cuddling naked at night, whatever that may be but there's no sexual intention around your physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. And we separate that on purpose because it allows couples to really be able to strengthen both of those independently. So just a little, just a little in there Uh, on financial intimacy, that's pillar number three. And this is the closeness and connection that comes out of how the two of you are sharing around your finances, everything from, you know, I mean, we're dealing with plumbing power couples here. So it might be like, how's the business doing, you know, professional finances, but it's also everything from your home budget uh, through retirement, insurances, all of that type of stuff. Yeah. So we go financial intimacy into our spiritual intimacy. And this is, this is your religious beliefs, Mm -hmm. practices. This can be anything from praying together, doing devotional, attending church services together, worshiping together, whatever that may look like serving together, but that's your spiritual intimacy. Okay. Pillar number five is your recreational intimacy. Yeah. This is what the two of you do together for fun. Yep. Now we know because we work together that sometimes business can overtake all the fun. And so this gets you back <laughs> to let's go no. do fun things together. Yeah. You yes. got it. Yeah. And, and it's not just date night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is activities you guys do together. It could be hiking. It could be kayaking. It could be, you know, traveling, whatever that may be. Do dates, are dates included in this? Yes, but it's not the only thing that is included in recreational intimacy. And lastly, is our sexual intimacy. And this is anything from, and we brought in sexual intimacy. This isn't just sexual intercourse. This is how are you romancing? How are you initiating? What's your foreplay like? And your, and your sexual intercourse encompasses all of our sexual intimacy. Love that. Yeah, and I love that. And that's, that's quite genius. frankly, that's one of my favorite topics that you guys talk about right. on your podcast. <laughs> on your podcast. I'm a guy. I mean, just bring it. Bring right. It. Just bring well, it. yeah. And I love how you guys, and when you, just how Tony, just so, you know, just, you know, foreplay. And like, we were talking about this. And that. I, you guys are just so cool and you make it comfortable. It's not, I want to show you, it doesn't feel weird or dirty. No, it's the stuff we're all t- talking about, but it's like, okay, how, how do we make it you right. know, um, better in your, in your marriage? Right. Because that's what we all want, right? We didn't get married. Um, you know, we didn't set out to get married and then, okay, after the ceremony's over, we just go to our separate, you know, places on the couch and then, you know, do the phone thing and right. have sex maybe once a month or whatever. That's not why we got married. We got married because we want to share life and life includes all of those pillars, at least that, that you and Tony just mentioned, right? It's all of those things. One thing that you mentioned um, was the recreational activity. I love, yes. Yeah, that's that's huge. And and it, yes. even the way that you you put it too, because our, our um, audience, our plumbing power couples tend to forget that. Right. You yeah. created this business, started this business, more than likely to have some freedom, um, right. which to do the things that you want to do, which hopefully there's some fun things in there. But we just get so wrapped up and just building the business and the grind and all the things that we forget to have fun. And that, that you're caught that you're you've named that as a pillar to mm-hmm. intimacy yeah. is huge. Yeah, I, absolutely. Because, I mean, we've fallen victim to it you know, working together and, you know, and our business is marriage. So we can look like we're talking and having fun talking about business, but really we're so into the business. And if we don't make time to separate and just be husband and wife, to remember who we were before we started our businesses, to remember what it was like to, to just go out and, you know, share an ice cream cone, just because, just because, or to have, you know, a walk in the park and not have to talk about business. It reconnects and recenters the marriage Absolutely. that you can go tackle all of the all of the giants that you've got to go slay. Definitely, and, and that is so important, and it's, it is important for business. You guys, mm-hmm. we talk about we talk about being boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, so love it. Being boyfriend and girlfriend, yeah. especially as couples, as we call you know, a couple of newers that are that are working together. Mm-hmm. You know, and we you, you know you have separate roles, and you're you're both going at things, and it could be friction. 
Sure. And, and then we can forget that we're husband and wife or that and we're that boyfriend we still, and girlfriend. I like, yeah. you know, we say boyfriend and girlfriend because it sounds a little more playful, yeah. little more youthful, a little bit that more so innocent. We call each other, we call yes. each other boyfriend, boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> but, to, but, to do, but to play together, yeah. you know, and that, that's an important thing. So I, I love that that's one of the pillars. Yeah, so that's of those pillars, what, what do you think um, is really the most important one or the foundational pillar? Well, you know, as Richard flashed the book there, um, the very first pillar that we talk about in the book, and it is definitely the workhorse, it's emotional intimacy, mm -hmm. right? How the two of you are able to communicate, how you're able to, to take what's going on inside of you, your feelings, your dreams, your desires, your disappointments, your expectations, and get them out of this beautiful space up here that sits on top of you, out of your brain, and actually through your mouth so that your spouse knows what's going on up here. Because I will tell your entire audience um, on either side, male or female, your spouse is not a mind reader. Yeah. What? what? Please stop <laughs> expecting them to okay. know exactly what you are thinking or feeling or want at any point in time. You actually have to communicate those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that is so true because, well, he should know that we're married. He should know what, should know how, what I'm know. thinking, right? right? Right. If he loved me, he would know. I wouldn't have to say it. And I'm like, he does love you. Please tell him what the answer is. <laughs> Over the years, that can get a little, you can get disconnected. Elisa and I've been married 26 years. Mm -hmm. We have two okay. kids. We've been running one extraordinary marriage together for 13 years. I sold my other business three and a half years ago. So I'm full time into one extraordinary marriage yeah. for three and a half years now. Um, and so we know like how we talk now isn't how we talked. 13 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Not even close. It's a skill. And that's something I want to share with everybody. Communication, your emotion, emotional intimacy. It's a skill. Mm -hmm. It's a practice. Just like plumbing is a practice. You learn new things. You go out onto a job site and I'm a son of a plumber. I've worked in the field with my dad, sweating in the desert, you know, Palm Springs and yeah. working the Tuna Beach, <laughs> those areas. I don't know how you did it. Yeah. Southern California. Yeah. You know, dad would go out and we would work on a job. And something would happen, but he learned from it because he mm -hmm. practiced. And it's the same thing with our emotional intimacy. We engage each other even once a week for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Over time, consistency, we, we learn about one another. We learn how to communicate verbally, verbally and non-verbally. Mm -hmm. Love that. Um, and what, Okay, I'm going to use a generalization here, right? Typically, men don't share their feelings. Now, it yes, could be either right. one. I know, Elisa, you you do marriage counseling, um, and so you probably you've seen both sides. But for the yeah. most part, I I would guess that it's men that's like don't know how to share their feelings or just aren't comfortable. How and so a wife is saying, you know, tell me, I, I want to know, and and the husband just doesn't know how to do it. What are some tools that they can do together to help him be able to convey what his his um, feelings are? Well, first of all, I do want to normalize the fact that that there are a lot of men and even some women, it, it generally does kind of fall along those stereotypes exist for a reason, um, who maybe weren't raised in families where talking about feelings was a thing, mm -hmm. right? There are a lot of messages that little boys get about talking about their feelings and, you know, holding it all inside and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, similar to, you know, what Tony was just saying about plumbing a few minutes ago, you can learn the skills. Not a single one of you that are plumbers, like woke up one day and knew how to do everything there was about plumbing. You went right. and you kept learning new skills. And when it was hard, you found someone else who had already figured out how to do it. Or, you know, I mean, it is 2023. There's probably a YouTube video on, you know, so many things. Well, they're, they're YouTube videos. Yes. <laughs> Hello. And, and yours. We're going to point. Exactly. And so, so you go and you develop the skills. And what I want to encourage is that if you haven't been in a place where you've been able to share your feelings, that's not because that's the way you are. It's because you haven't developed that skill. And, and so it's taking that mindset that you would take with your plumbing and saying, okay, well, how do I figure this out? What do I need? And I want to actually show this tool. Okay. This okay. is an emotion wheel. Okay. And I don't want anybody to be overwhelmed with the fact that it's got like six different colors and, you know, a whole bunch <laughs> of different slots. because this is a tool I use with my coaching clients. It's on Amazon, you know, but you start in the middle and you're like, what am I feeling? So is it anger? Is it fear? Is it sadness? And the reason you start in the middle is because most people can at least identify that emotion. You know, you know, if you're angry, you know, if you're sad, you know, if you're scared, and then you start coming out, taking another, you know, step or two to go, okay, if I'm angry, am I, am I feeling critical right now? Do I feel criticized? Okay. Let's, because if you can say, you know what, I feel like you're being really critical right now. 
that changes it instead of just like, I'm angry. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. I can't do anything as a spouse. I can't do anything if you just say you're angry or if you're not talking because you are angry. But if you say, you know what, that felt like a criticism, the way you addressed me or the way you brought that up. Well, now we can engage in a dialogue. And this tool has been incredibly helpful. We have a couple in the one family, our audience, married 43 years. Mm-hmm. Guy grew up in the South. We don't talk about feelings. We put our head no. down. We go to work. We provide for our family. Yep. About three years ago, three and a half years ago, they find one extraordinary marriage and the husband goes on this journey to learn about feelings. He got himself a feelings wheel, an emotion wheel and a dictionary. Cause he's like, you know, in his seventies and he's like, I'm just, I'm not Googling everything. I just give me a dictionary. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so he would start in the middle and then he would start looking up definitions of words to the point where he could communicate to his wife. This is what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Their marriage now at 43 years in, there'll be the first people to tell you, we're having the best connection of our lives in every pillar at 43 yes. years married. And he's 70. I have goosebumps. That's amazing. That, that, and that is so, so believable amazing. Mm-hmm. because, because we're, you know, well, we're 60. Okay. okay. And so we've had, when we were younger and newly married and business, we didn't communicate at all very well. No. Now we do communicate. We learn to communicate. In fact, in fact, I, I tell guys, I tell my guys, I'll tell my guys here. Yeah. Look, the rest of the guys, you can tell all the other guys just to go F off. Jump off a cliff. Jump off. Okay. That's a nice way of putting it. Okay. But you need to communicate here. Yes. And if you can communicate here, not only the business, you know, just what we're talking about here, it's great for business because, you know, now, now we're both on the same page, mm-hmm. but we know in every aspect of our lives, we are, we are strong. Every aspect of our relationship is stronger you know, mm-hmm. 30 years in. Yes. But yeah. it almost wasn't because was, we, we were, we were almost divorced at, at year three right. because of, of these things of, for sure. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I love as a 70 year old guys, listen yeah. to this, a 70 year old man married to the same woman for 43 years, yep. which that says a lot. Right. right. Um, that now, now they're having just the best, the best marriage. Life is not over at 50. No. Right. <laughs> it is You're just getting stuff. started at that point in time. Yeah. Exactly right. You're yes. exactly right. Um, so it, it's possible for anyone to, to mm-hmm. learn those traits of um, emotional intimacy. What are some other things, um, Lisa, that you, that you talk about with your clients or, or yeah. that you guys have seen dealing with you? I mean, you've got a pretty good sized audience, a huge audience, mm-hmm. the one family, as you call it. Um, yeah. What are some things that you see that people initially struggle with, with emotional intimacy? Well, I think knowing how to get a conversation started. Right. Because if yeah. it's been a lot of years where, you know, maybe you've just kind of drifted apart and you're only talking about the logistics, you know, like the kids' schedules, the work schedules, you know, really surface level business stuff, business stuff, you know, um, it, it's all the, the laundry. It, it's the surface level. We, we all know what those topics are in our marriages. It's the surface level. What do you want to watch tonight? It, it's, yeah. you know, yes or no questions. Um, just to move along the conversation to feel like we're connecting. And yet we really aren't. Sure. The bare minimum, right? Bare minimum. But if you think back to when you were dating, like I want everybody just, you know, for a quick second, think back to those conversations when you're dating. Your face has told me everything I need to know. There were probably great epic conversations. For hours. For hours. hours. Right. (laughs) Right. And then somewhere along the line, obviously for you guys, probably, you know, uh, around year three, three. we're, we're not talking about anything. Other than we want to kill each other. We did talk right. about that. Yeah, It's very yeah. real. Well, Lots right. of right. But getting something like a conversation, a deck of conversation starter cards, mm-hmm. yes. this would be a great way mm-hmm. to get back into that place of saying, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to ask you. But you let somebody else, they've already done all the hard work. They've mm-hmm. boxed it all up um, and made it easy. We actually keep this deck. In fact, I had to go find it because we usually keep it in our glove box of our car so that we have oh, it in the car. Yeah. So smart. What happens when you're in the car? You have a driver and you have the person on their phone. Mm-hmm. Yes. Unless you interrupt that pattern. <laughs> and here's, like, here's some of the questions. Like, I'm going to just yes, read. I was going to ask you, please do tell yeah. me. I mean, because I think that's part of it. Sometimes we look at these things and we're like, oh, would we really use it? And yes, you, you totally yeah. can. Driving down the road, just pull one out. You don't have to go through the entire deck, pull one. And so one question could be describe one of your favorite memories one of your favorite mer- memories of time we spent together. Oh. Like it could be one of those recreational intimacy moments. You know, we went on this mm-hmm. trip. We did this date together. We did this activity. On the other side of this card is how do you imagine our life, our life together in 10 years? Oh, wow. wow. So we're looking back. 
but we're looking forward. Yeah. So yes. it's a little bit of like, hey, where we were, where do we want to go? Mm. Helps us. Memories are important. Like mm-hmm. memories are important, but it's also important to dream together as well. Mm. Yes. So it, yeah, so that really so that's a great tool to really kind of get the juices thinking again. Or, you know, because that's what happens. I love that you said, Lisa, let's remember back when you were dating one another, which is so true. We're all, we're all Twitter pated when we're dating, you <laughs> oh, know, absolutely. we think each other's great and we love and we're, we hang on, you know, as guys, I'm, I'm hanging on every word and, you know, I can't wait to see her, talk to her when I hear yeah. her voice, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and I'll, I'll listen to everything she has to say <laughs> and also, you know, talk back, but, but, wah, 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 but yeah, wah. we get about a, into marriage and then all of a sudden that yeah, it goes, wah, wah, and starts shutting down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or whatever. And so that's a great tool to get you thinking again, to remember those, those times. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. I then, will tell you when we've had some of our retreats and we've gone on excursions, you know, before and we have to take a bus ride from the resort to wherever. Yeah. And one of the questions we, we always, you know, try yeah. to keep some conversation going. One of the questions we always ask is tell us how you guys met. Right. Mm-hmm. So we'll go around the couples every single time. As soon as it comes to, you know, we call on, you know, Jane and John, Jane and John, how'd you guys meet? both of them break out into a smile every single time, right? Mm-hmm. It's because they're remembering mm-hmm. that that beginning and the feelings and all that. Every couple has that. Yeah. Every single couple has that. But we do tend to forget that. And something like those conversation cards uh, will be helpful. And also keep you keep you from scroll holding at the, um, on date night at the dinner right. table, yeah. right? Okay, so, so just put your phones, like keep your phones off the table. Keep your yes. phones. I mean, or one in the glove compartment. I mean, when our kids were younger and we'd have a babysitter, we'd have one with us. Uh Mm -hmm. So if the babysitter needed us, but one would just stay in the glove compartment. Now we, we go out because our kids are much older so we can go out and do whatever we want. But I also say on those dinner dates or, Mm -hmm. you know, you're out for a breakfast date or a lunch date, whatever it may be is changing the positions and the Mm -hmm. seating arrangement. Let's put it that way. The seating arrangement. Uh Because so many of us will just sit across from each other. And I know Elisa and I, for instance, when we're podcasting, we sit, ac- we stand across mm-hmm. from each other. When we're in meetings together, when we're talking about business things and, and we may be at a coffee shop or we may be here at home because we have a home office, we sit across from each other. So what usually ends up happening, if we do sit across from each other at a date, it's inevitable that guess what comes up? Business. something about business, <laughs> yeah. right? In, in some way, shape or form, it could be a team member. It could be a project we're working on. It could be a pastor that we're speaking to, to, um, to possibly speak at their church. I mean, anything comes up. And so changing the dynamic or the positioning, you're seating, sitting side by side, shoulder to shoulder. A lot of people go, oh, that looks weird, but it's yeah. like, <laughs> who cares? This is about your marriage. This is about you having the extraordinary marriage. Who cares what anybody else thinks about? It's like, how are we going to engage in just that positioning goes, all right, no business. This is us time. Pick up your cards. Yeah, Yeah. start answering your cards. Just like you guys are sitting right now as you do the interview and us are standing (laughs) here doing it as well. It changes the dynamic. That's so good um, because... um, and we talk about all the time. We we have sat together on the same side of the of the booth or wherever we go. We always sit on the same t- side, right? And so other and people have looked at us like, oh, there's a couple of weirdos. You know what they're really thinking? Dang. Well, I'm we jealous. just have. I have to tell them. They still like each other. Is what they're yeah. really thinking. Exactly. We we found a place here in the island that's uh, it's a new place and locals love it. It's great food. And um, Blue Marlin, got to go there. Well, there. Uh, oh, I'm talking about the other, other place with the with the younger guy. Well, he's younger. Everyone's younger. He's like 30. <laughs> okay. All right, not married yet. And good, oh, look, right. good, good looking shop. guy. Good looking guy. He's like, I don't know why I didn't. You know, he probably had, you know, but um, but he's working at, at the shop yes. there. He's the Local cook. Coffee shop. Right. And he's good little sandwiches. But in a quiet guy. I mean, good. He was big, big quiet guy. Um, but he asked us. You remember he asked? He is how long? You know, how long you guys been married? How long you guys been married? Or what do you do? Or, you know, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do, you, what do you do? Right. So, I mean, because we got, because we were sitting next to each other and I guess we looked like we loved each other <laughs> and we're having, we enjoyed being, being together. And so people do notice, you know, and it is a, you know, yeah, and he brought up his girlfriend, you know, right. the, the fiance or whatever. And, you know, so, so how did you, how long have you been married? And we told him you know, almost 30 years. He's like, wow, what's the secret and, and all mm-hmm. that. So you don't know the lives that you're going to affect right. or, you know, how people notice you. Right. Yes. right. And may say, dang, I, I want that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you got married, more than likely, 
you did want that. You did want all of those things. So. Right, and we experience this with business. You guys know, you know, you're, it's, it's okay. You're, you're entrepreneurs. Your business is yeah. always there and talking about it. But sitting side by side, we so relate to that. Helps us talk. We'll still maybe talk about business, but a very, very high level if it comes in, because it's just part of our lives, right? Our clients that are like our yeah, kids. Our, yep. <laughs> our, our kids, right? <laughs> our client kids. But it's sitting next to one another brings back that boyfriend, girlfriend feeling. Yeah. You know, I, can, I can touch her. You know, well, she, may, she may touch my leg. You know, not sexual, not sexual. No. It's just yeah, that that's the physical that's intimacy. That's the physical intimacy. And it's a lot right. easier when the two of you are side by side for, you know, the arm around the shoulders or hand holding or a hand on the leg because you're in such close proximity. Mm -hmm. and, and again, you know, as we're building, you know, not just incredible marriages, but incredible businesses, how can the two of you stay on the same team, stay yes, in alignment, yes. stay connected? Well, you know, our son played football. He was a defensive lineman. And so it was all about, the guys that were to his left and to his right. He was nose. And so they moved as a unit. Well, they had to be on the same team. They had to be able mm -hmm. to communicate. They had to be side by side. And if we can take that same mentality into our marriages, Absolutely. hey, you have to be side by side. There are times we have to be side by side. Mm -hmm. What shifts in your relationship when it goes from being opposite to being side by side and tackling whatever the world is yes. bringing at you? Such a great yeah. analogy, Elisa. It's so good. Yeah. I love that. Um, I was going to ask, and I already forgot what the question was about. Oh, no. Okay. So, um, Elisa, you do marriage counseling, okay. coaching, right? Mm -hmm. And you do that. That's not you guys together. Tony, you're kind of the more yeah. operational and then also on the podcast, right? Or yeah, you, you learn your strengths, right? Sure. Even yeah. for I, your plumbing power couples, you learn, yes. you, you got to learn your strengths. What are you good at? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because by doing that, you're doing what God's called you to do. You're, mm -hmm. you're living in your genius zone. Mm -hmm. And we realized early on that that's not my genius zone. And Elisa has such a prophetic voice to just speak into people's mm -hmm. lives and hear what they're mm -hmm. saying and like assimilate it and be able to give it back to them so that they can take action, hold them accountable, where I'm more of like, I'm here to support that mm -hmm. and everything else we do here at One Extraordinary Marriage. Okay. Love it. What a gift too, that, that you do that for the couples, Elisa, that you, if you, you know, can speak prophetically to them of, mm -hmm. you know, what you see and what you're hearing. And yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Love that. um, yes. What was the question I was going to ask about it? I don't know. I don't either. Um, well, I love that, that the point of being different like that, you know, it's that way with us too. And we talk about this with our plumbing power couples. And if you're out there, look, that that's, that's the gift. That's the strength of mm -hmm. your differences, mm -hmm. you yes. know, and, and, and with our plumbing business and even our business today, I, you know, I, I do very well at, at, um, you know, kind of speaking on the plumbing and the business side and just speaking frankly and being connecting with, you know, people, um, Lori connects very well as well, but she, she is the business. I'm the mm -hmm. million dollar plumber because she made me the million dollar plumber. Yes. Okay. I mean, she gets, she gets things done That's <laughs> awesome. and all this, all the systems, but we, we needed that, you know, we needed that in our business and, and in our life and it yes. works that way in our lives, Absolutely. but being connected, that emotional intimacy takes that like this older, that older couple, you're talking, you know, yeah. that, that just, it, it's like, it's like your life on steroids, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that connection on steroids, yes. when you truly have that emotional yes. intimacy and, and then you're, you're you're fulfilling what you more than likely spoke at your um wedding vows right the mm -hmm. two become one right? Right. right and leaves this is um his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife right and the two become one flesh yes mm -hmm. bible's not kidding on that right no. right it's not kidding they truly mean one flesh you are you're operating together as one person totally right. dependent on each other and we're not just talking this isn't just a sexual thing right the one because you have you know sex whatever right. but but the emotional thing like we're talking mm -hmm. about here if you're if you're both on the same you know same road mm -hmm. working the same game plan you're aware where each other's going or whatever you're going to get there a lot quicker right and um and then when you get there how powerful do yeah. you feel together right that you guys accomplished whatever that was together um mm -hmm. instead of separately right uh, i remember the question i was going to ask okay so elisa you talk to an awful lot of couples right i do what do you see as the biggest struggle um in marriages and i know that's there's tons right but that you're you're seeing that you couples come to you and say man this is what we're struggling with what what's the biggest thing yeah, I will say, um, and it's actually because I asked the question on, I, I have an application for coaching. And so I can tell you because I've, I've got the statistics on challenges in emotional intimacy is the number one. 
whether that's we don't talk anymore, whether that's um, we fight all the time. I mean, that's the reason the second book in the Six Pillars of Intimacy series is all on conflict resolution, because, you know, you coach people for 10 years and, you know, you have thousands and thousands of hours of coaching sessions. You realize there's a pattern here. Everybody's got conflict. Um, you know, it's we only talk about the surface things and we don't talk about sex. Everything comes back to how are we communicating? with one another. Every problem in a marriage comes back to that emotional intimacy. And so if couples can get equipped and that, that's what I do as a coach, I'm, you know, it's like, I, I think of, you know, I'm thinking back to my father-in-law and all of his tools, right. And he had certain tools that he would use on certain jobs, certain tools he used all the time. And Tony has told the story and certain tools that were just in his one Home Depot bucket that he would just say, Tone, bring me the bucket. Yeah. Bring <laughs> I was the bucket getter when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, Go run and get my bucket, Tone. I'm like, yep. You got it, dad. Wait, and wait, so wait. we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I just remember the big orange Home Depot bucket, Home Depot bucket. in the garage. But, yeah. you know, being in that place of saying, and acknowledging, look, we may, we might not have grown up knowing how to be emotionally intimate. Okay. You're married. You can develop new skills. You know, yes. like you said earlier, nobody's dead. If we're all listening to this episode, nobody's dead. So you've still got an opportunity to change. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and so I just, I work with my couples. And I'm like, okay, what tools and strategies do you need? What can I put in your marriage toolbox? Some of which you're going to use every day. And some of which you're just going to pull out because you've got that random job where you're like, oh yeah, we need to pull this out. Yep. And so that's it really, it comes down to the emotional intimacy. The emotional in- intimacy. And Claude, and we do have the other, the second book, right? That yep. just came out, correct? Yes, we haven't just read this out. one yet. Yes, the, the six pillars, right? Um, so, for conflict resolution, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yes. Um, and we're looking forward to it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We just we think. And the reason we came out with that book, Richard and Laura, is when you look at your six pillars of intimacy mm-hmm. and you're looking at each pillar and when they have cracks in them, what ends up coming up is conflict. How do we how do we strengthen this pillar? Well, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. We're not doing our marriages. You just get into conflict. Mm-hmm. And so because of all the work Elisa has done over the years with her clients, we are like, we need to give those in the one family a way to resolve the conflict. They need to break that conflict cycle and have that tool. So when they're going after, say, their emotional intimacy, conflict arises, they can arrest it mm-hmm. that in that conflict cycle before it just blows up and they're, you know, miles and miles apart from each other, right. figuratively and literally. Right. Yeah, so that's yeah. why that book came. Yeah. Love, Love it. that. Um, you know hope i was i wrote down hope is there hope for a marriage that's really struggling so you know we've we've got a lot of um again husbands and wives that are that are listening to us um listen to potty talk and they're they're going through it they've got stressed all of their yeah they're stressed a lot of their pillars are cracked all the things um for one is there hope for a marriage that just seems like man we just we've lost that love and feeling right Mm -hmm. um as long as both are willing participants are is there hope can you give um, listeners out there, yes, there's hope. It doesn't matter how how bad your marriage is, there's always hope. Yeah. I mean, when you've got two people that recognize, look, we still love each other. We realize we don't know everything that we need to know. And we're willing to really humble ourselves because there's some humility involved in that, mm-hmm. uh, of reaching out and getting help. You know, it, it's kind of like, it, it's, <laughs> so this is part of what I do in coaching. It's like analogies kind of like popped to my head and yeah. what you guys are plumbers and this is all about plumbing. So like all of a sudden I've started, I've got pictures of like, you know, little pinholes and big old leaks and things like that. Uh, <laughs> it, it just, this the is how pinholes God, are the worst. Yeah, this yeah. Is how God, but you know, when a couple is, when a couple recognizes that they need help, the biggest step of courage is that first one that says, we're going to ask somebody for help. It's kind of like, you know, we've tried long enough to take care of our plumbing problems by ourselves. Now we actually need to call the master plumber because um, it's gotten really bad and we can't do it anymore, right? And and you guys know you have clients that call you because they've tried to do it themselves and hasn't worked, right? Same thing when your marriage is in that place where you've tried all the things that you know you have to do. You still want to be married. You just know you need help. Reach out and get the help. Don't wait any longer and, you know, risk some kind of, you know, plumbing slash marriage catastrophe. Catastrophe, right? right? And what I've seen for a lot of couples, if they're in this in this place, they're they're both willing participants. They're like, we've just hit, we're in the valley. Mm-hmm. We're, we're stuck in the valley, be it work, kids, volunteer life. 
aging parents, whatever may be going on, you know, uh, just business relationships are going south. What I find from many of those in the one family, the hope comes when they listen to Elisa and I, mm-hmm. because they're not alone anymore. Mm-hmm. They're not secluded. They're not isolated. So now they're able to hear from another couple. And at the top of every episode, we have what we call our hugs. These are our testimonies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Your folks that are just sharing what's happened in their lives. And they get to hear not just from us, but they get to hear other couples mm-hmm. who are in the Valley as well and hear what they did to get through it. You know, oh, we picked up the book. Oh, we just been listening and and we talk about each episode together. We, you know, we did this and we did that. And it that's where people go, I'm not alone anymore. Because in marriage, sometimes if you're not in community, mm-hmm. you can feel really alone and isolated. And you're the only ones that are going through this. And I'm here and Elisa is here to tell you, you're not. Yes. We've gone through a lot in our 26 years of marriage. And we know many a couples who've gone through way worse than us and we seen them come out the other side so you're not alone not alone and love that because sometimes everybody posts on social media right the mm-hmm. happy family we're so happy yeah we see all the our, our good dressed. sides of perfectly our sides. and look at me and my husband and all the things right when and so you, people look at that and go man i'm the only one whose marriage sucks yes right? you know you, you feel that way and that's, oh, yeah. that's not the case um, so, and that's what I love about you guys and, and your one, excuse me, one family. And when we do listen to your, um, podcast, that is my favorite part, the hugs, the hugs because, yeah. and I love, at least you typically get a little emotional about it and you should, right? Because like we talked about in the green, you're changing people's lives. This seven year old guy married 43 years. This marriage is different now mm-hmm. because of that. The because, best, the best right. it's ever been. Yeah. Right. Um, and it can't be the best it's ever been. Absolutely. We're, you know, and I love that. You know, part of it is like we, we say, you know, we, we have our online education platform, the Success Academy. We, we teach the <laughs> business of plumbing. And yeah. we, we have a saying, we look, you, you've been taught plumbing, but you were never taught the business of plumbing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I mean. So it's the same thing with, you know, we, we get married. But a lot of times, I, you know, I, we weren't taught how to be married. No. And we didn't come from, and with us, we didn't come from families that showed what it was like to have a good marriage, okay. you know, so we don't that have that. So we've way. never learned how to overcome the conflicts and, uh, and, you know, when we, we are hitting the stressful times and when, when, you know, as the relationship matures, you know, when, when the feelings go from those, you know, the first that Twitter pated, we're all excited, what the pixie does, what we hear someone say once on a pot, you know, as a country singer saying, we lost the, yeah, we got divorced after what, three or five years because um, the pixie does, um, was gone. The pixie dust was gone. The pixie oh, dust. Was yeah, gone. So, so whatever we, you know, we get, you know, the, the pixie dust, which is going to happen that, you know, so what do we do? How we've never been taught. How, right. how do we mature in this relationship mm-hmm. and in not only just mature in it, but make it better and better and better, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Not right. taught that at all. No. So that's what we love about, about your work. Yes. Your, I would also say a ministry. It is a yeah. ministry. I'm most yeah. sure it is a ministry. Yes. Mm-hmm. Again, and, changing lives. And that's mm-hmm. what we want to connect. And so we're so glad. That's why I wanted to have you on, you know, potty talk, because we know this is a foundational issue for the success of these businesses. And so I, we wanted to introduce you guys to, you know, to our, our potty talk world here, you know, MDPers, million dollar plumbers. Mm-hmm. Um, how can they get connected with you or, or learn more? You. Yeah. So I want to give something away. Elisa and I want to give something away. We talked a lot about emotional intimacy. And on the other side of that pillar, we talked about the sexual intimacy. Yeah, and yeah, so that yeah. always peaks up, peaks people's interest. They're like, well, uh, let's talk about that. You Sex. got me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yes, keep talking. Keep talking. So <laughs> what we have is we have a free marriage guide and it's oh. called 19 questions to amazing sex. So oh, we're going to wait, hold on, Tony. Guys, listen, that's a great topic. Right. 19 yes. questions. For amazing sex. All right, go ahead. So it's everything we've talked about. It's that emotional intimacy Mm -hmm. and it brings in that sexual intimacy. So take one question, take two questions, start talking to your spouse about them and open up the door. This is a a tool that Elisa and I have used over the years. So you can get that at oneextraordinarymarriage.com slash free 19. So nineteen. Okay. That's one nine at the end. Free 19 at the end. Okay. One extraordinary marriage.com free 19. All right. We'll make sure we have that in the, the show, show notes notices. as well. Um, so okay, well, let me can you give one one of the topics that's on that? Just one? One of the questions? 
Uh oh, I'm caught. Uh oh, I'm, I'm, well, <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking of what are you thinking? Oh, I don't know. You go first. Mine was oral sex. Mm. There's a there's a question on there about oral sex. Are are you into it? Are you interested in it? And so I think for like even in our marriage over the years, mm -hmm. it's been one of those areas where in the beginning it's sort of like well, we're just supposed to do this because we've seen it happen, right. but or never really, about, yeah. or we've heard about it, but never really right. talked right. about it. But once we started to express what that looks like back and forth, mm -hmm. that's when our oral sex life, like I completely would. got transformed. Mm -hmm. Cause I understood what Elisa wanted. She understood what I wanted and we could perform in, in, in I that know. time while we're, you know, having sex. So mm -hmm. again, you know, these 19 questions are a form of emotional intimacy, right? Mm -hmm. It's giving you a tool to be able to, you know, I mean, there's questions on there about toys, about frequency, you know, things mm -hmm. like that, but yeah. allowing you, so you don't have to be like, oh, I don't know how to ask this question. Right. Something right. I've always thought about, but if you've got a tool, it's so much easier to sit down with your spouse and say, hey, so I was listening to these guys. They were on potty talk, Richard and Laura love them. I got this guide. I'd love to just, you know, and Guys, I will tell you, if you're not listening to this episode with your wives, um, let her see the questions first so you don't blindside her and she feels completely caught off guard and even give her permission to ask you a question off of that list first. That's this allows her, this is going to allow her to feel more comfortable and more engaged in the process and not just like, oh, he wants to have more sex. So we found something that was about sex. <laughs> so again, I'm just, I'm trying to set you guys up for success. Yeah. Success yes. Academy. These are the kinds of things <laughs> to build the emotional intimacy. I, I love that. And you know what? Uh, and this is a, obviously, I don't know if we've ever talked sex on Potty Talk. I'm I trying know. to think if we have. I don't think we have. First time for everything. We're at three, episode 390 and we're talking sex. On there we go. Potty Perfect. Talk, so. Love it. It's about um, time. <laughs> it's it's about, about time. time. Yes. <laughs> Every call is an opportunity for your plumbing business. Stop missing those opportunities with Plumbline. Plumline is a 24-7, 365 days a year answering service exclusively for professional plumbing companies. Whether you're the plumber owner still in the truck who needs someone to answer the phone, need the service line answered nights and weekends, or just want to catch those overflow calls, Plumline is a no-brainer. Sign up with Plumline today. And go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash Plumline and mention that you're a Potty Talk listener to receive priority onboarding. Um, but... Um, so I know we're talking about, you know, pretty deep subjects with yeah. sex and, and Tony, you have no problem just, and cause that's your, you guys' role in your ministry of just here's sex, all the things. Um, there's a book in the Bible called the, the, um, song of Solomon, mm -hmm. yeah. and it is about, um, biblical married sex. Yes. God, did, God created sex, mm -hmm. not just to, um, to bring children into the world, to pro, pro how do you say it? Pro Procreate. Procreate. Thank pro you. Golly. Well, words like, but enjoyable. He yes. made it that it's supposed to be enjoyable what? between a husband and a wife. Yeah, what do you it, call it? What? Song of Solomon. Oh, <laughs> I don't call it that. Um, marriage porn. Richard has titled <laughs> The Song of Solomon is Marriage Porn. To make so there we go. Um, but it it's supposed to be that way, right? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be that way. And sex can be amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I and the intimacy that the, or the emotional intimacy certainly needs to come first. So Elisa, yes, Lisa, that's such great advice is don't husbands no, don't fine. get this download and go, okay, wife here, I've got some questions for you. Have a seat. Don't do right. that. Don't do that. Well, she's got don't a baby on the hip and she's making dinner and right. She's you filling don't. out the kids' school forms and yeah, don't. don't do that. Right. <laughs> You're failing every single time. And it can be fun. <laughs> I love it. It is the emotional side that makes it more intimate. So I love the, the question, get the questionnaire. Yeah. Get it, guy, you know, in couples, because it just would be good. It gets um, to, to know, because once you know what each other's like, like, you know, oral sex, then you can you can give that to one another. Right. right. And so which is what we want. We want to we want to please one another. Right. Or you but, may but, find that neither one of you want it. Right. Which is important. Right. You find, you know, as a guy, you know, as a husband to know what my wife wants or doesn't Boys. want makes everything a lot more fun. All right. Yes. Cause, I, Cause I'm not, you know, we're not, we're not worried about anything. And you're but, not a mind reader too. Right. Like but more said. importantly, it's that emotional intimacy. It's even close. It's not the, the, the sexual acts that necessarily is the intimacy, but it's that what makes you one is that emotional connection mm -hmm. that we are, we are in the same zone. Right. We both understand. Right. Yeah. What, and that's why we have, again, it's that's why, why we got married. the right words for it, but that's. We didn't get married yeah. um, just so we could have sex. I mean, that yeah. certainly it's, it's a part of marriage and it's a part that brings you even closer together. Um, mm -hmm. And so having those types of conversations when, again, 
Um, I, I never had the birds and the bees talk with, with my mom, right? She, it was just like, here's an encyclopedia, right? Hmm, go at it. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly yeah. yes. what, right? How, how many of us were taught the birds and the bees? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the old Britannicas, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and all the- It was like three inches thick. Oh my exactly. God. My plumbing dad rolled by me one day. He's like, don't get a girl pregnant, Tone. I was like, here we go. <laughs> okay, there, there, that's it. All right, <laughs> peace yeah. out, Dad. Yeah. See you. Right. I'll see you after work, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That Have was a great your, day. That was your lesson in sex. <laughs> well, and that's oh, important that's here. Funny. That's why it's important to have these conversations. We, we, the bottom line is we we want a relationship that's 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 close mm -hmm. and intimate. You know, right. I just say, but all all these things. Mm -hmm. But as guys, Tony, I don't know if you really, you know, I I come from the trades and the military. And, you know, of course there's porn out there and that gives us a vision as guys, what, what the intimacy is in a, in a relationship, yeah. but that's not real intimacy. Nope. So we got to learn these things that really what, I mean, you still want sex, you know, want sex and all that. It's not, it's not sex is not bad. That's mm -hmm. what we're trying to make the point of song of Solomon. You know, God, you know, our creator said, our father, Hey, have a good time in your marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk. created body parts just for pleasure. Right. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. But it's learning. You got to learn. We weren't taught. And in my case, I'm around other things that kind of conditioned me to think in a, a different way than mm -hmm. what things yes. were meant to be that could be best, the best. Yeah. yeah. Do you see, and we're going a little bit longer and I told you, we told you guys it just might happen, which is fine. Um, porn, right? Porn is a big thing. And yes. do you see that, Elisa, in, in your, you know, counseling mm -hmm. tons of couples? Um, is it worse now? You know, what's, and if we're talking to possibly someone that is struggling with um, mm -hmm. porn addiction, what, what say you on that subject? Um, I definitely think the last two and a half, three years, um, COVID and lockdowns and, you know, isolation and all of that definitely um, has been a contributing factor. I do think there's been a spike in it, whether or not that's being reported. Um, I actually I think, do, I think I actually do the last time the, I was yeah. looking at the Pornhub that yeah, there has it, there was a spike through yeah. covid wow. and and it's not just men either that's what i was going to say yeah th there's been a big spike in women viewership and all when it comes to porn and to that end a porn for women is oftentimes couched as erotica and mm -hmm. you know books like 50 shades of gray and things like that that can be that can you know distract a woman's eyes and mind from her husband and so i, I just want to be real clear that that if you're in that place, one, pornography is a part, has, was a part of our marriage. Mm -hmm. Tony came into our marriage addicted to pornography. It was there for like the first eight years. Um, he has been free mm -hmm. of that. That chain was broken. Um, gosh, like 19, mm -hmm. 20 years ago, 19, well, how old is Alex? Alex is 20. So 19 years, 19 years ago. Cause it would happen when our son was one. Um, yeah. so there is, there's freedom. Mm -hmm. On the other side of pornography addiction, there is great sex mm -hmm. on the other side. Like I tell people all the time, we are having the best sex of our, our married life 26 years in after pornography, after, you know, all kinds of craziness, because you can't be married 26 years and not have ups and downs. Yes. It, it's about making a commitment to being restored to the way God created you and restoration in the marriage to say, okay, I'm not going to allow this, this deception, this falseness, because it's fake. Guys, I don't, I don't, ladies, I don't care what you see. It is not real. They do not love each other. And I'll share with you guys what I share with a lot of men, very specifically when they tell me they're viewing porn. Um, I will look them straight in the eye and I will say that woman that you see on the screen, she is somebody's daughter. Mm -hmm. She is somebody's mother. She might be somebody's sister. And if you have any one of those three types of people in your life, would you want some guy viewing her and masturbating and using her as an object? Yes. And usually yes, that's a really it. big, like, <gasps> I'm like, well, that's somebody else's and you're doing it. Wow. So get help. Yeah. Yes. Well, you hit right on, mm -hmm. Lisa. It's a game I play with myself, Tony. I don't know how you do that. You know, we live in a, um, you know, I, I, I see, I see attractive women. I mm -hmm. work with, I work with attractive women. We, I mean, we try, but I, the game I play is I make them my, my mother, if they're down to age, usually as out at age where at least a sister or a mm -hmm. daughter, 
-hmm. I make it an emotional connection like that. So I don't look at them now. Mm. And even if, you know, in a sexual manner. So as soon as I make them my sister or my daughter, there's a ooh factor, ooh, an ick yeah. factor that comes into play that also calls up my primal um, of wanting to protect yes. my sister and daughter. So it puts a different that's light cool. on, on them. And mm. that's taken the edge off for me mm. you know, for a long, for a long time. Kind of a, that's, a mind. That's awesome. Right. But, that, but yeah. that's a game I play. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Other games we play. Yes. Um, one thing, as we're talking again to probably a lot of young couples that have young kids, right? Probably not a lot of sex happening mm. when you've got, it depends on the, the season. When you guys said, you know, the best sex of your lives, because you're practically empty nesters. You've got one out and then we've yep. got one, one year, right? Countdown yep. is on. Um, we're, we're empty nesters we're empty and nesters. it's the best. I, yeah. I, I, there's just no words. It's I mean, what? anyway, so when you're yes yeah, so well, you can anyway. walk around the house naked and nobody you know, right. best thing yeah. ever. You know it, from it here, all comes down from here to down that. we're naked you know you don't see what okay but, we got the <laughs> oldest move back in for summer we're, yeah, we're, right. we're, oh. Oh. oh yeah right, right. like it's already it's only been like three days and it's brutal <laughs> okay. so but when we but our daughter went off to college yeah. um and then our son our middle son still lived close by and our daughter was you know in, in virginia um our son lived close by um, he came over one night unannounced. Popped oh. in. Popped in. Right. That was the last time he did Never that. again. Never again. <laughs> <You got, laughs> what? I mean, he just hey. walked into the house and <laughs> saw him morning wanted to see. You know? <laughs> we heard the yep. garage door and we're like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Love it. Not your house anymore. You know. That's right. Right. So well, no, we text first. We <laughs> maybe we text gotcha. mom coming over. Um, so, anyways, we're talking to young couples, you know, with possibly young okay. families that you know, sex is tough when you've got. You know, especially if you're breastfeeding, you've got little ones constantly yeah. hanging on you, right? All the, the things. business, right? The business. Um, what's some advice that you could give that kind of gets people to to still have that sexual intimacy mm -hmm. um, and and um, emotional intimacy to kind of hang on through this difficult time, right? To get to the point where you, you have that connection. So when you get to Tony and Lisa's, um, you know, married 26 years, Richard and I have been married almost 30. And and that it's better than ever. It's not where we look at each other and go, okay, kids are gone now. Who are you? And yeah. I even want to have sex with you. Yeah. Right? So, you know, kind of speak to that, if you would, kind of the, the young couples going through those stages. Um, first of all, let me say that it, when you have young children, you are in one of the toughest stages of marriage. Yep. It, it's not covered in what to expect when you're expecting or whatever the baby blogs are now. <laughs> yeah, they, don't, right. they don't tell you that, you know, they tell you all the things that are going to happen to your body, but they don't really spend a lot of time talking about this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was those early years were really, really rough on our marriage. And so, you know, what I want to encourage you, you know, what I love about plumbers is that you guys actually schedule your appointments, right? Like you're not just dropping into people's houses or businesses unannounced. It, it's got to be scheduled and you show up. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would say to these young couples is consider something like the intimacy lifestyle where you're, you're, you're talking about how can we schedule the frequency of our sexual intimacy, not to have it be one more thing on the to-do list, mm -hmm. but because look, if you're a young mom and you've got kids hanging off of you and you haven't gotten a clean shirt on in two days, and maybe a shower is like a distant pipe dream while you're cooking dinner, like all the things, if you know that the two of you are going to work hard on Saturday night to get all the kiddos in bed early, you're going to get time for that shower and maybe even shave your legs because you know sex is on the table. <laughs> you, you're going to put on something that you feel more attractive. In, then all of a sudden that shifts instead of it just being like, oh, are we going to do it tonight? And you're like, no, I'm exhausted. Right. And so it's, it's thinking, considering scheduling it, it's considering, you know, nap time isn't just for the children. You can also have sex when your children are sleeping during the day. And when there's more connection between the two of you, guess what? You have an extra set of hands to help you clean up, run to the grocery store, put dinner on the table because there's connection between husband and wife. So now the two of you are unified in tackling all of the household things because you're feeling that yes. physical and sexual and emotional connection. And we started our intimacy lifestyle, scheduling sex when our children were three and six. Three, yeah, I was going to say six and three. Mm -hmm. And so that literally has kept, and we still live that out to this day. And our frequency is twice a week. Mm -hmm. We have one day that's off. That could also be a bonus day. But we have been living that out for 14 years. Wow. And have gone through many of seasons. And it's it's worked. It's helped us just to, as Elisa said, it's like, 
it's there. It's on our schedule. We know what we're doing. And we talk about this in on the One Extraordinary Marriage Show. We have numerous episodes around scheduling sex or the intimacy lifestyle. We have an intimacy lifestyle planner. We have all sorts of things that you can jump into to learn more about it, how we set it up and how you could set it up for your marriage. Love that. And it, it uh, comes down to being intentional, right? Yes. It, 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 yes. It, you are not going to have a successful marriage and a thriving marriage and a, a connected marriage without being intentional. Right. It just is not it going to happen. Do, it just doesn't fall on you. No. you know, like we fall in love and the right. pixie dust falls on it. No. It's, it's not no. real. Right. You, know? well, you, you have to you be have intentional. To, you have to keep putting pixie dust. Yes. To use that analogy, you have to keep putting the pixie dust out. You have to pull it out. You have to sprinkle it. You have to make sure you're, you know, if you run out of pixie dust that you go get, go get more. By the gallons. By the gallon. By the gallon. And, and that may sound like a little intimidating or scary for some, but it really is as simple as scheduling the time together. That's the pixie right. dust. Yes. It's amazing. Well, Even when we schedule it, you think, well, you're in a frame, frame of mind. We, we've, done, we've done the same thing. That's such great advice. And it's worked for us as well. The schedule that Saturday, you know, Saturday night, we're, we're going to, kids are going to be over here. We're going to have sex. Wait, what's our new favorite night? Uh, Our new favorite night is Tuesday, Tuesday nights. Naked charcuterie board Naked night. Naked charcuterie board night. It's even got its own like forget Taco Tuesday. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> this is so yeah. much better than Taco Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we love. Sorry, it. So it's there, scheduled. What, what's the? There's honey on there. Are we, yeah, we're no recording this. Thursday. Okay, no. Sorry, baby. Oh. So yeah, is there honey and strawberries? Chocolate? What do you have on your charcuterie board? <laughs> now I'm so yeah. curious. Yeah, I'm going to say I'll send you pictures, but no, I'm not going to do that. Right. <laughs> to us. <laughs> but at the time of scheduling, it doesn't feel right. Like, but there is the pixie dust shows up by just being there, mm -hmm. and that we we schedule this time to be together. And when you relax, it just all of a sudden, in, in, you know, you start talking. Use the, the the question. That's a good time to have the questions. You yeah. know, that kind of start talking about stuff and that just gets the pixie dust shows back. Well, and at least you talk, you guys talk about this on the podcast. Um, start texting each other about it, right? If yes. you go, you know, we're, we're scheduling sex on this night and this night, start texting, you know, little cute little things, right? Uh, and you did that to me. I'm sorry here. Okay. The lovely Lord did this to me recently. I, I had to run some errands. She knew I was just upset. It was just stuff that had to be done. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm in a mood doing and I love doing, I was in a mood. I'm not going to say what it, cause it's, but it's my, you know, Anyways, you can't be perfect at everything, right. sweetie. So, but throughout the day, when I was going through it, all of a sudden, uh, Laura would show me a picture of her and the oh, thing, yeah. thing she's going to wear, <laughs> or or cutting. The, you Look know, at that <laughs> smile, Laura. <laughs> she goes, right, I mean, you're getting ready for tonight. Just that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. In text, or it's just a text, not even a picture. You said, "I'm really looking forward to later. I got yeah. some. I got a surprise for you." Yeah. And it, just that kind of stuff, even though there's no. It's just. Yeah, and at least you and, you, and yeah. you guys both, Tony, you guys you talk about those those things. It's the flirting, right? right. It goes yeah. back to um, the other pillar, right? It, it's just not the, the sex part, right? Right. Um, it's the physical, the, and it is the flirting with each other. Um, mm -hmm. You probably did that when you were dating. Absolutely. Right? More than likely. Right. Mm -hmm. Can I share one other thing, too, specifically Absolutely. for couples that have young children? Yeah, you um, and this was something I discovered a few years ago with with a couple I was working with, young children, mom's exhausted, dad's exhausted, like everybody's exhausted. And one of the biggest complaints, they actually, their application said, we've got cracks in all six of our pillars. I'm like, okay, let's start. But his big complaint was, we don't have sex regularly. And I'm like, fair enough. I hear that a lot. When I started talking to her, she's like, at least sometimes I'm just too tired to have sex. True, true statement. Absolutely. What I want to encourage you, especially if you're in that season where you've got young kids and there's a lot of fatigue is to actually expand what your definition of sexual intimacy is, mm -hmm. right? Sexual intimacy isn't exclusively sexual intercourse, right? How can the two of you, you know, what does initiating look like? What does foreplay look like? What is on your sexual buffet? Maybe it's just oral sex one night. Maybe it's just, you know, we are going to take that physical intimacy of cuddling naked and we're just going to, you know, be a little more handsy or whatever that is. But if you can expand what the definition is beyond intercourse, then it's a whole lot easier to say, yes, let's do this tonight than to answer the question. Hey, do you want to have sex tonight? And, no, I don't want to have sex. But if that definition has been expanded, then it's yeah. like, hey, I'm not up for sex tonight, but I'd love to do this. We start getting more yeses in a marriage and the yeses are what connect mm -hmm. and break that cycle of rejection. That's mm -hmm. so good. Cause that is a thing, rejection, right? And then pretty soon, the, you know, the, the other spouse is like, well, fine, I'm just not going to ask anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So yep. yeah, which we is, see that. yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> this has been so awesome. Great. We could go on and on and on. In fact, is it is it okay if I share? Because I think we know uh, the retreat. We have a, we have a retreat coming up as of this. I, yes. I think this this episode will air sometime uh, in July. July. I mean July. So. Okay. Um, of a uh, twenty twenty three. We have our 23 fall retreat coming up. We do. November 1st. November 1st to the 5th. Right. And we are very blessed and fortunate to have um, Tony and Elisa, Lisa. all right, are going to be one of the speakers. Yes. They're yeah. going to come to Cancun with us. And they're, so they're going to do a presentation, talk to couples, because yeah. the vast majority of people that are going are, are going to be couples. So we yeah. thought this would be just an amazing um uh, couple to bring because it's not about business, right? right. This, all this stuff isn't about business. It's relationship and it's freedom lifestyle and all that. And so we're so honored that Tony and Lisa are going to join us and be able to talk to to these couples. And I'm just, I can't wait to see, you know, the couples that maybe pull you off to the side and go, which I'm sure has never happened to you guys. Never. You know? <laughs> so, so the, the beauty part of that is you can talk to Elisa. I'll be in the pool I'm hanging out <laughs> wait, 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 okay. with the guys. We come talk with the guys. We'll hang yeah, out in the like, pool. Just, yeah. No, I'm kidding. I, I'll yeah, be yeah. there. Okay. This is much just pouring in. No, we are so excited to come on out and serve you guys and and every couple that's going to be there. We're we're super excited to to bring you know the six pillars of intimacy and rocks of marriages so that they can have the extraordinary marriage they desire. Yeah. Well, that's we love perfect. this is this yes. this intimacy um, in the relationship is extremely important to the success of our plumbing businesses. It's yeah. just it's it's a foundational issue, and we just love how how uh, you Tony and Elisa how, how you share and how you minister you know Thank um, you. and and how you speak on these kind of just we just had this you know a conversation on sex and it was just comfortable it wasn't you know mm-hmm. and, talk. right on po- right so, so it now officially is potty talk people hear the podcast oh, called potty talk there it is. Oh, yeah what are you talking about well today we did talk potty so there we go <laughs> I love it. I love that we were the inaugural potty talk episode of 390 or whatever number. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's perfect. Well, guys, truly, thank you so much. We we just can't thank you enough. We're so honored to know you guys. Excited to have you at the retreat. Um, you're gonna be a part of the Success Academy too at some point. And we're gonna have a longer conversation about all the pillars, right? Um, yes. but we certainly want to recommend the books again. Yes. And I know that you've got Pick you know up. something else you want to chat about mm-hmm. the brand new book that's out on conflict, but I rec- also recommend yeah. getting the first one too, because that's mm-hmm. that's the basis, right? Yes, yes. Lisa, right? Okay. That's and it's very it's yes. very well done. It's it's an easy read, guys. For guys, I'm not a reader. But we know that leaders are readers, and so we, we talk about reading. Um, th- this was very easy to read and uh, great information. Yes. Um, very. We've lived this. Mm-hmm. So yes, we love that you guys mm-hmm. have gotten this information out there. Absolutely. Yep. And congratulations on the book. And then you mentioned the cards, right? Can they get the cards somewhere on your website, those conversation starters? So we will get the links to you, and you can put them in the episode notes. Perfect. Okay. No, we would love so they'll that. be down. Yes. So by time, this, yeah, it'll be an yes. episode. Notes. And also, I know we've mentioned a couple of times, but officially they do have a podcast called The One Extraordinary Marriage, right? Yes. Um, and how many episodes? It just kind of started, right? So how many episodes yeah. is it? Yeah. So as of today, we've recorded 758 episodes. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> 758 episodes guys on intimacy and marriage. And I'm sure you guys have seen over the course of how many years have been doing this? 13 and a half years of yeah. podcasting. 2010, wow. January, 2010. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were the very first podcasters. Ever, yes. I think, <laughs> I think you guys were the, the inaugural pod. That's a long time to be doing. We're in podcasts. the first four or five years. Yeah. Yes. Gee whiz. That's wow. amazing. So it's, it's a fun episodes. program. Yes. We listen to it in the mornings when we're getting ready. Mm-hmm. Our, our routine oh, wow. is, you know, we're up in the morning and we have, we have our quiet time, mm-hmm. time in the word. We work on our daily GPS for our audience to know what that is. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we go work out. And then we come back and get cleaned, and then we listen to the, to the podcast. Yeah. Yes, so we can and talk a couple more. We need to listen to those as well. Yes. Um. So, guys, go check out the podcast for sure. Um. And there's all different kinds of topics um in there, and you know, kind of pick and choose. But I think once you start to listen, you're going to say, well, "I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning, and I'm going to start listening to them." And I know I've heard you, um, have heard you guys say that some people in your one family have said, "By golly, I just went back to the beginning, and I started at one and went all the way through." Right. Yes. Many, many people have done that, which is amazing. And we're amazing. Well, and so guys, if you've got it, it doesn't matter if you think you, my marriage is great. You know, we've got a pretty good marriage. It can get better. It can even get better, right? You're, um, there's probably somewhere in one of those pillars that might have a little crack, a hairline crack. Think of it, think of it as a plumbing inspection. You know, oh, just you know just listen to stuff just kind Absolutely. of reviewing you know how are we over here mm-hmm. yeah our, our emotional yes. intimacy 
And so even if you think again, you've got a fairly good marriage, still the it's just to make your marriage better. If you've got a marriage, it's like, well, okay, we're we're all right or whatever, then yeah, for sure. If you've got a marriage that's kind of struggling, for sure, start listening to this podcast, start doing some of the things that Tony and Elisa recommend, and for sure um get the book. And because again, you you got married for a reason. You got married because you loved each other. You wanted to spend your life together. You you said in front of God and everyone till death do us part. Well, right. and unless one of you kills each other, right? Right. Which then, <laughs> that's not right. a we whole other story. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. But but love is not a noun, it's a verb. Yes. yes. And so it takes intentionality. So be intentional. Yes. Check, check them out. Again, again, what was the website? What, oh, we... yeah. You can go to one extraordinary marriage.com. Everything is there from the books um to the podcast other articles everything that we got going on grab and grab the freebie yes all right and they've got a facebook group as well too um that the one family right so all kinds of resources um we again we just we love your hearts for marriages we love your hearts and and your ministry for um changing marriages and families so big fans yes big fans thanks again for taking the time to be on yeah on potty talk yes it's our pleasure thank you for having us yeah Yeah. thank you both so great Thanks so much. All right. Wasn't that great? <laughs> you know what? I, like, <laughs> I think that was my favorite potty talk ever. I think so. I kind of went off the, you know, a little bit more than what we thought or whatever. But <laughs> No, not, not what we thought. No, no, we, no. we certainly wanted them to go wherever. Uh, yeah. But this is their expertise, right? Because yes. they, they deal with these types of things. And what I just love about them is they, they just keep it real. And it's not these lofty ideas, whatever, right? These all scientific and complicated stuff clinical right? sounding right no, that, that's why i love listening to their podcast mm-hmm. and then you know and of course you know they coach and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. you know well but i'm sure it's, it's, it's very similar but it's not mm-hmm. clinical feeling correct in fact it's, it's very real mm-hmm. you know and and what i loved i know when i said it kind of went a little off here even, even i and Silvis, you know what's this have to do about plumbing business <laughs> and, and it feels a little you know what we want to introduce you to mm-hmm. are things that will make you successful mm-hmm. This is one of those things that has nothing to do with plumbing, has nothing to do really with business, mm-hmm. but it is a foundational um, aspect to being successful mm-hmm. because of the relationship right. between the two of you, especially yes. if you're a plumbing power couple. Mm-hmm. But and, it, and our hearts really are for marriages, right? Yes. And a lot of you have heard our story before, and, and you know we've been married almost 30 years, and at year three, we were, we were separated, almost divorced, hated each other, all of that, right? Um, but through the grace of God, um, and through intentionality and marriage counseling, um, we we not only survived, but eventually thrived. And, yes. and we can't even imagine who those, we don't even remember who those people were that just hated each other all those right. years ago. Um, we would have loved to have had a, a tool like this, Tony and yes. Lisa, with their book and their podcast and, and all the things that they offer um, to struggling marriages. So for us... Um, we want to bring to you, as and again, the vast majority of people that listen to Potty Talk are a husband and wife, plumbing power couple, or at least the husband listens and he drags his wife along. Uh, but our hearts are for your marriage as well, not just your business. Of course, we want your business to be successful. Of course, we want you to provide a great um, work atmosphere and pay and all the things for your employees and, and take care of your customers well, of course. But our heart truly is for your marriage to be strong, because if your marriage is strong and you're united and you have this intimate connection, um, if you've got kids, your family's going to be changed. Your family w- will be affected by that because um, your, your kids know if you're fighting, right? Your kid, your kids know if there's stress and, and struggle. Um, but if they can see mom and dad united and connected, um, then you're going to change your family. And families change the world. Families are the ones that change the world. You have a solid family that's united and and doing the things like having a plumbing business and, and all the things. It, it you're unstoppable. But this the things that they talked about in this podcast um, can really change your marriage. So and like we said at the end, even if your marriage isn't like on the rocks or whatever, and you're like, oh, we've got a pretty good marriage, it can always get better. Use these tools, all the resources that that Tony and Lisa um, mentioned. Highly recommend. And and of course, um, the books. For sure. The pot start with the podcast. It's such a great podcast and they're pretty, usually pretty short around 20 to 30 minutes. Um, it's such great information about how to build intimacy and not just sex, but intimacy within your marriage. And ultimately that's why you have your plumbing business mm-hmm. is to create a life. Correct. To have and, a life. And, right. And to create okay. and have a life and freedom. And, and, right. Mm-hmm. And so in this, this intimacy, this, in, in our relationship, mm-hmm. which we, we talked about the pillars, you know, not just sexual, mm-hmm. 
Well, you know, that's the fun part, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's an important part. Mm. But there's other there's other aspects to the intimacy. Right. It's, it's all important. Yes. You have that. That makes life fun. Mm-hmm. It makes life exciting. Mm-hmm. And I love you. Know, it doesn't matter what your age, it can, guys. It gets better and better and better. Yes, it just can. like we talk about with your your plumbing business. If you do the right things, you know things scale. Right. All right. <laughs> uh, same thing goes in, in your relationship in your marriage. Okay. You do the right things, it can just get to where I just can't just I can't believe it's this good. Right. Okay. Exactly. And this fun. Right. So, and we don't say this an awful lot, but share the episode. Um, share the episode with people outside. Uh, you know, or within your circle that maybe aren't business owners, right? Because this is this is a great podcast for any husband and wife, any any married couple. It's a great great podcast because we really don't talk business that much. Obviously, we didn't talk business that much in it. So share the podcast um, with with your friends, with your family. Let's let's start changing marriages, strengthening marriages, and 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 strengthening families at the same time. So. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. And hey, check the, check them out. Hey, and we'll invite you. I believe at this time we we, we may have we we got extra extra rooms for the retreat for the retreat in November. And, yes. And so we, we, if you're may interested, have, may have, may have a spot or whatever. Yes. Come join them. They're, they're going to be fun. We're going to have some other others there too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be be good conversations. All right. It's yes. going to make your life better. And come out, hang out with us here. Mm-hmm. If you are interested, just type. Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure. Right. You can type retreat in the comments. You can try that. Um, but also, just you know, send us an, e- an email. Right. Um, send us an email to admin. A or no, let me say it differently. Send an email address to info i n f o at the million dollar plumber.com info at the million dollar.com and say is there any any rooms left for the retreat love my husband and, and my wife and i or whatever would, would love to come november in november 1st through the 5th november 1st through the 5th 2023 correct right. all right cancun mexico luxury all resort. inclusive when's the last time Evil. you took a vacation when's the last time you and your wife went somewhere right when was the last time um, we're, we're, we're offering this and you get to hang out with other people, like-minded people. Um, and then also learn from topics, you know, different topics from people like, um, Tony and Elisa. We've got some other great surprises as well. Yes. Um, but just a luxury, all inclusive adults only resort. All yes. right. So come join us there. <laughs> all right. Hey, also we want to help you with your plumbing business. So, you know, um, schedule a free call with one of my strategic advisors. Okay. There's no, there's no pressure. We're not going to push it towards anything or whatever. Um, we, we definitely first mentioned the success Academy and we, we have some other options for you. If we feel you're a good fit it may be offered up or introduced to you, but the bottom line is we just have a conversation. Um, we'll find out what, you know, what, what's the problem you're dealing with. Well, we'll, we'll point you in the right, de- right direction to overcome that problem. Okay. We just want, we just want to help you. So yes. you can schedule a free strategy call, go to the million dollar plumber.com forward slash call. C-A-L-L. Okay. Yeah. Schedule your call. So All right. there we go. Well, Fun. Fun <laughs> episode. Thanks, guys. I know this was a little bit longer, but we really, we, the, the conversation was going so well and just love the topic. So yes. hopefully you enjoyed it too. Let us know in the comments um, All right. what you thought. There we go. Okay. Hey, but before we let you go, right, mm-hmm. as always, I want to remind you that you were purposefully and wonderfully created and you were created to do great things. So get out there and plumb like a champion. Bye, everybody.